Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. Welcome to Real Magic Review, and I'm finally reviewing Mark Chandel's Totally Free Will. Before we do this, please like, subscribe, check out Card Magic Course. That's my online Card Magic Course. Everybody loves it. You will too. And if you like this channel, you will very, very much like that. Over 400 videos, live sessions every week and uploaded every single week, uh, other than the odd one that I can't make if something kicks off, but uh, usually it's all very good, uh, as is today. It's a wonderful day, and I'm very happy that I've read this book because um, Mark gave me this a year and a half ago, and it just, I don't know why this stuff happens. It just sometimes you just don't get to something, and I think it became this big task I had to do because I'd left it so long. And then books kept coming in, and I felt really bad because he gave me it in the session. It's like a year and a half ago. I'd read a bit, and then I was going to review it, and then I forgot what I'd read, so I went back to it. And maybe part of it subconsciously was the fact it was I knew it was a book on one trick, and I'm thinking that's not really my sort of thing, even though I'm now getting into mentalism more. Um, and actually, I've just spent three days with it and read it and actually made one of the tricks up and performed one of the tricks. And it's, um, yeah, well, we'll get to that in a minute. So what is it? If you don't know, Free Will is a Principle by Dede Corbusier, uh, which I think I've checked the pronunciation, I think that's right, Dede Corbusier, uh, came up with, which is this idea that you give someone three items and, they, and you predict where they've put each one of those items. You know? so, so in the first version of this, there's a pen, there's a phone and a set of keys, um, there's a few instructions, and then you show them predictions and they read it out and they say, I'm holding the keys, you're holding the phone and the pen's been put out of the way. That's the first effect. But that's the main effect and that's kind of a book of these effects. It's taken that principle and Mark and other performers have taken that and there's a, other people's versions of this, which we'll look at in a second, um, and done those versions. And part of me, I think, was going, well... Is it just going to be one of those things for the completist? Is it like, well, you've got this version of the trick, the original, whatever it is, and I didn't know loads about it. It's not, like I said, it's not my expertise. And is it going to be, here's the best version, here's other people's versions, which aren't really as good, but they're there anyway for those people who want to read about them. And I think that may be what has stopped me kind of spending the time on it. Again, subconsciously, it wasn't a decision I made. And so I've read the first one, and I kind of went, okay, I like that, and actually it's not what I thought it was going to be. The, the first version of this, is, and I'm going to look at it because I've just read it. You know. The thing is, for ages I'd have, a, I'd have a big bit of paper there with all the bits I was going to say, and it'd be kind of obvious when I'm looking at it anyway, because I, I can't remember what I'm looking over there, so I might as well be honest and just, <laughs> just look at the book, because I can't remember a whole book. Uh, but I have been through it and then learned word for word and a lot of the time with the props in hand as well, so I can give you some good sort of... Um, uh, insight into what these things feel like. So, the first trick is called free lunch. Uh, you can guess, you may, if you're a magician, guess what kind of method that uses. And straight away I went, oh right, I wasn't expecting that. And this, what most people are doing, uh, there's, a, there's a kind of, I don't want to say weakness because it's still strong, but there's a, with the original, there's a bit that you, if you don't do it properly, would, would be maybe seen through. And people are trying to basically make it as fair as possible. So there's not kind of, one way of doing it that's a bit iffy. It's sort of every every way of doing it is very very strong. So that is, there's kind of an issue and problem with this trick that everybody's trying to solve. So the first one is trying to solve it using this principle, and it does it very well. And actually, this is the one I made up and performed for three people now. Uh, I haven't got any footage of it. I might have by the time this goes out, but there's a good chance I won't have because it's still kind of hard to get get people to film and stuff at the moment. But I will say it's very very strong and fun to do. And when you read it, as with all of these. It does, in your head, play out quite complex, but when you do it, it doesn't. And it's like a lot of these things. When you actually have the props and you practice it, it makes complete sense and it's very intuitive. And, and this is no exception. Uh, and what he does, because there are certain thought processes you're going to have to do depending on what is said and, you know, that sort of thing, he's got this really nice way of giving you kind of mind maps. So at the end, he'll go, right, this is a kind of visual representation of where your mind has to go if certain things happen. And that's really, really useful. And as I said, for visual learners, for those people who want that thing of kind of sum it, summing it up but in something more visual than just a load of words, it really, really works. And I think that's a really good idea. This is a really strong trick at the beginning. And he said, I think it was Bob Cassidy and Doug Diamond. And they, 
I think they know their stuff, said that it's the not, he, he performed it at the, I think it was the Mind Convention, I'm not sure, but he performed it there and they said it was one of the best versions they'd seen. And that is, and I think it is really, really fair. It's really good. It's, it, people aren't going to be able to backtrack, I don't think, with this one. Well, they're not, unless they know the principle. So that's great. And then uh, free balling is a similar thing, but done with um, three different coloured paper balls, uh, which I like. I will say at this point, it, uh, <laughs> Mark has... A, it, there's some nice moments in this when he kind of breaks because these, these books can read fairly dry and this doesn't actually it's, a, it's quite a good read but there are a couple of moments where there are a couple of jokes and you know what I'm talking about Mark where I kind of thought that's quite funny that's quite funny there's a couple of moments that I thought were a bit eye-rollingly cringy I thought oh, I could have done without that at that point you know what I'm talking about um, and it does get a bit laddy at, at one point but it's a, it's, a, it's a minor criticism and it's, it's nothing that ruins a book but I will say there's a couple of mo moments that it kind of thought it kind of feels a bit out of place there uh, and one of those is in is in that chapter. But saying that the trick is brilliant, the explanations are brilliant, and you know exactly what's going. And it is this could have been a really dry read, and it really, really isn't. So, um, and then we've got three will, which is again he, he takes a Colin McLeod idea um, and just puts a tweak on that. And, and this is where you realise you know this is there's a lot of clout in this book, not just from Mark but from other people as well. He's taken other people's ideas with permission, not taking them, uh, adapted them, of course, and not just Deddy's but other people's versions of Deddy's. And he's done a lot of his own work as well. And then the second half of this book, we do have other people's uh, versions of the the trick as well. But there's a lot there's a lot of expertise in this book and a lot of learning, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, within this, you've got again, you've got these these um these mind maps i'm just seeing them now which is great you know it's i don't know if you can see that there but it's it's really really good but anyway i'm repeating myself within this book there's a lot of learning and this is what i was starting to realize it's not just here is a load of versions of the trick as i was worried about it's actually here are actually quite very different versions that even though they've got the same principle they feel very different they've got very different methods and what you end up doing is learning a hell of a lot about verbal techniques about um uh, performance, about emphasis, about all that good mentalism stuff that, again, can be very dry to read, but because they're in the context of tricks here, you're getting l loads of different learning. And I expect in the second half of the book, I felt this even more. I kind of felt like I knew a lot more about different mentalism techniques after reading this, which I think is great. Uh, free, will, free will rock you. I'm not going to go through every single one, but there are a number here, which, again, are really strong, but start bringing in different items that you might have to get. I don't mind it in a book like this because there is enough that doesn't require that. But there's a couple of versions where you're going to have to spend a bit of money to be able to do that version as in the book. Again, if it was, you know, eight versions of, of 10 tricks using and you had to go out and spend 100 quid each time, I'd have a problem, but it isn't. So I'm, I can kind of forgive that. It's not an issue. It's just it's putting it there to go, right, if you want to spend a bit of money, you can do it this way. But I would say the the versions of it that don't require you to invest anything are just as strong. I really think they are. There's um there's a, a totally three will, uh, which is an even fairer version. It takes a bit of arts and crafts, a little bit like the first one, um, the free lunch one, but makes it even fairer. So again, we're cutting away these sort of the number of choices that need to be made and the number of the process and all that kind of stuff. I do think you may be getting to a point of going actually. To us, it looks a lot better because you've got less choice, but actually maybe the process is, is, is part of it. So there's a kind of fine line with this stuff. Again, I mean, most of the improvements in here are very valid. Some of them are kind of like, and I think he does mention at one point, he kind of puts this in just for sort of reference and completeness, but he says some of them are like, you, you maybe don't have to worry too much. And within the tricks as well, there are different versions at the end again. Well, if you don't want to do that, you can do this. So again, it goes really, really deep, but without getting dull. You've got this Quartermaster's Coin. This is where the other performers start coming in by Steve Drury. And this has a really interesting premise. It's got an espionage theme. And you can imagine getting three people out onto stage and doing this with tra these travel tags. Uh, but it's got this surprise ending with a comment, which I think is really nice and very theatrical and could play really, really well. And this, again, we're taking free will, but it, we're giving it another look and a different uh, feel. Free will coins. Really, really nice. I'm not a big fan sometimes of those, you know, when you've got a certain amount of coins and people pick one, but this is great and it ends up with a coin bend. And when I s read this, uh, the, the summary of what this trick was going to be, I thought, well, do you need to finish free will with a coin bend? Isn't it kind of diluting it? Or isn't it sort of tagging something on the end that isn't, um, uh, isn't relevant to what we've just seen? And actually, it does. And everybody in here is thinking of this. The premises in here all kind of work. There wasn't anything really that I thought, well, that doesn't make any sense. It all... 
it, it all kind of ties together really nicely. And again, there's lots of different things you can do theatrically with this. That sort of uh, free will coins has got a really nice way of, of doing the coin bend at the end, actually, which is super fair. And they're all almost involved in it. It kind of feels like you're not hiding anything. Really, really clever. And different versions of it as well within that. Because all of these, again, you know, you're not just getting someone that... You know when you get some books and different people have contrib contributed ideas and sometimes you read them, I think that's not really... You've just kind of... You haven't really had much time on this, have you? People... It does people that feel that people have really put the, the time into this. You know, pages and pages on this one routine. It's great. And the illustrations are really, really good. Um, you know, really clear. There wasn't really any times when I didn't, really, didn't understand it, anything. And that can be quite common when you're trying to talk about verbal cues and scripting and things like that. Uh, rock, rock Paper Tricker. There's two of these um, Rock Paper Scissors versions. One earlier on that does require you to go and get something. It's really, really nice. It uses a sort of small pair of scissors and a rock. And, you know, you have the actual items on you, which I think are great. And a bit of paper. Mark Elsden's uh, is, a, is a kind of, I was going to say more impromptu, but it's something you can put together quicker. Uh, uses minimal props. And again, it's really, really fair. It's got a really nice technique in it, which there'll be no heat on anything, where again, they're just not going to be able to backtrack anything. Re you know, it's easy to say, really be really clever about mentalism, because it's all very clever, isn't it? But really a lot of things, you know, it fascinates me how people have come up with these ideas and it, it impresses me as well because I know how hard it is to think of this stuff and, and to come up with something that isn't just kind of a, a diluted version of something else. And I really didn't think that, you know, Group Dynamics, Drew Backenstoss, um has a, easy for me to say, has a, he's a great idea, you know, you go up to people and you play this game with people and the game seems kind of not, not relevant to what you're just about to do, but again, you call back to it at the end to justify the whole performance and it kind of primes people in a way. It's kind of like word association, but he calls it word dissociation. People have got to think of a word that has nothing to do with the word beforehand and then you've got this wonderful prediction of this word that you know explicitly hasn't had anything to do with anything, so it seems even more impossible. Uh, and I really like that. Again, you can spend 10 minutes on that one routine with a group of people and you're using that group. That's why it's called group dynamics. Um, now this one I just thought was stunning. Will of the City, um, Michael Murray, and you know, you read something like this and you, you understand why Michael Murray has the reputation he does. It's just stunning. And I read it and it happens over the phone, right? So you do free will over the phone. You send someone a text message, they have the phone face down, uh, and then at the end the, the, they pick up the phone and the free will happens over the phone. You don't even have to be looking at them. It's not, it doesn't have to be Zoom. And when I read it, I thought, well, that's just going to be done like that. Just, no one's going to fall for that. And it isn't. And it, I just thought it was really, really strong. And out of all of them, i do not not necessarily saying it's the best one because it's for a certain circumstance, but we all try and find things we can do just all audibly, you know, over the phone. And a lot of those tricks that we can do on the radio and things like that or phoning into things are pretty weak. They're kind of fun, but they're weak. But this is super strong. I just think it's... It's a masterclass in, in linguistics, I think, as is this book, I think, as well. There's, you know, people have con contributed some really amazing stuff. Improbity, Patrick Redford, you know, he's got this, uh, this gimmick. And when he, he talked about the gimmick, oh, someone else I'm going to have to buy it. And I mean, no, you don't, you make it, and you make it really quickly. And again, it's very, very clever. It's, it uses a principle I've seen before, but not in the same way. And something, again, which makes it, you know, you can hand the thing out to, to the person at the end as a way of doing it that make it really fair, this prediction. So, yeah, and then um, Mark Chandel's Chando Lope, which is a two, four, or six way envelope that you can make, which then goes into this totally free will idea, which is his kind of coming back to what he wanted to do and create this super, super fair version um, of the trick. And this is slightly different, inspired by a um, uh, Angelo Carbon, sorry, uh, effect, which, which many people know. But this time we have, well, it was an extra on a very famous effect on the gift. But, th but this time, instead of having the bit of paper, you show two halves of the paper, you put one away and uh, you do this really fair free will and then put the halves together and they're torn and they match perfectly and they uh, read out the prediction. And it's kind of the fairest way. There's quite a lot of work that needs to be done to get into it. But once you've done it, you don't have to keep doing it every time you perform. So, and I, I might have missed something out. I probably have, but I just thought it was really... A really good read, actually, and um, and I'm really glad I got into it. I've learned a lot. It's an old book. It's been out a while, so you know. But as we talk about many, many times, it doesn't mean it's not as relevant. And I think this is these books. I tend to, 
you know, don't think it's just one version of the trick. As I said at the beginning, with loads of poorer versions of it, they're very, very different, these versions, and they all have pros and cons. Um, and I don't think there was anything in there that was, wasn't super strong, but it was really, really strong. So thanks, Mark. Sorry it took me so long. Uh, there's Mark Chandler's Totally Free Will. Any questions, do comment below, and I'll um, answer them on Thursdays, and come and join the live sessions every Thursday. Sometimes it's a different theme that I'll be talking about. Sometimes it's just answering your comment, comments. Uh, so do remember to to comment and if I can't answer you I do read them all and I thank you very much for them please like subscribe check out Card Magic Course use the link below have a good one take care see ya